Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. This is video number 18 in my series, An Introduction to Freediving and Spearfishing California. Today, we're headed back down to Southern California. We're gonna hop in the water. I'm gonna show you how to catch, clean, and cook California spiny lobster. Let's go. So on this particular trip I was headed to Southern California to teach freediving for sea urchins as well as introductory spearfishing and even a little diving for scallops. So this is Alejandro dropping down and getting his second rock scallop. Uh, he got his first Pacific rock scallop with me on our last dive together. Really nice one here from this shelf uh, at the bottom of the sea in Santa Barbara. Nice work Alejandro. Now before we hop in the water, just a little cautionary note. Your entrances and your exits are going to be the most dangerous part of diving. So let's talk about how to get out through the surf and then we'll uh, circle back to getting back out of the water at the end of the video. When you're swimming out on your board, you want to make sure the body board is in your belly. And your arms are on both sides, laid down, moving forward. I see people trying to swim around with them like this. The problem with that is as you're going out, if there's a wave that pops up and you can see that it's about to crest right over your head, you'll see the white water on top. You have two options. One, get tumbled, or two, duck dive underneath it. If you're going to duck dive underneath it, you want this all in line. Grab both sides, deep breath, point the nose down and kick straight through it. If your mask is on your forehead, you're almost certainly going to lose it. So again, keep your mask on or keep it around your neck as you're going through that wave. If it's like this, and you're going this direction towards the wave, it can actually catch the edge and bend it backwards, which bends your back backwards. You can break your back doing that, so please don't do that. Make sure you use it just like a kickboard. Put this portion as it's intended into your belly, grab both sides, and kick forward. If you're gonna go lobster diving, you absolutely have to fill out your lobster card first. That includes the month, the day, and the location code, as well as the gear code. The gear code for free diving is number four. Once you get out of the water, the first thing you have to do is bust that card out and put in either a big old zero or whatever number of lobster you did retain. All right, so the goal of today is to go free dive for California spiny lobster. Now, it's been a long time coming. These are one of my all time favorite crustaceans to go for. They're incredibly tasty and they're super fun to hunt. So I swam out to this little secret spot. Um, this is an area that really doesn't have a tremendous amount of reef. It's mostly cobbles and a little bit of boulders. And as a result, nobody really knows it's even there. Um, as a matter of fact, from the beach, everything looks like sand. So it is a secret reef and it's one of my favorites. It's one that you can swim out to and even though these cobbles are not particularly impressive, if you find a single cave in there that's like big enough to hold a lobster, most of the time it has a lobster which is pretty special so as always i drop my pry bar down that sits on the bottom that is my marker i really like a stainless steel pry bar uh, as a marker it's a little bit heavier than the aluminum pry bars but aluminum will, will also work now the most important piece of equipment that you're going to bring with you on this dive is your light so i'm going to light them up and check it out he comes right out so I'm gonna reach in there and grab him you got to be quick with these and they don't usually crawl out like that that was just a kind of a fluke anticipate them swimming full speed right away from you back into the back of the cave so when I approach them I shine the light and then just fast as I can reach my hand in there and grab them one thing to be aware of though is you don't want to reach in super fast and hit a sea urchin because that can go very deep into your hand the second most important piece of equipment you're going to have is your lobster gauge. Now as of 2023, a lobster has to be three and a quarter inches along the carapace between the horns of the lobster and the furthest extent of the carapace. In this case, you can see there's a gap between the carapace and the tail. So in this diagram, you can actually see three and a quarter inches 
along the carapace. That's what we're shooting for at a bare minimum. No dice on this guy, so bye-bye. Now remember, we're going to let go anything that's undersized. We are always going to do that. The reason that we have minimum size limits is these animals need to reach a certain size in order to reproduce, in order to keep this sustainable so that we know when we harvest them that they've already passed on their genes and therefore our kids and our grandkids and great great grandkids will be able to go for these as well. That's what sustainability means. It means we care enough about the resource because we love doing this and we want future generations to be able to have this experience and enjoy this wild food as well. So you can see there's all kinds of lobster throughout here. Um, it's kind of murky water, but again, I think that keeps a lot of people from even exploring this area. They think it's sand, they get in the water, it's kind of murky, and they don't really pay attention. But sure enough, if you're able to swim out in here, look around, find some caves, and light them up, you just never know what you might find. Take a look at the size of this guy. Boom! So I try to get in there as fast as I possibly can, really race my hand in there grab that bug and what I'm oh yeah we also refer to them as bugs oh yeah so here I got my float line caught around my heel remember stay calm rule number one is stay calm rule number two is if you really get in a pickle then uh, drop your weight belt your weight belt costs a lot of money but your life is worth more anyway funny enough I gauged this one thinking for sure it was going to be legal but there's a little gap it's about a sixteenth of an inch short so bye bye we'll see you in a couple months Breathing up here on the surface again and uh, dropping back down. Maybe the third time's the charm. All I know is I'm already seeing a tremendous amount of lobster and a lot of young ones, which is a really good sign for the sustainability of this particular spot. So as I'm dropping down, again, shining my light, looking for caves. Here's a big cave here. I think I had already pulled a lobster out of that, so there was nothing in there. But as I'm coming around the bend here, I'm looking and I see yet another bug. Anyway, watch what I do with my left hand and my right hand here. Left hand goes to the back of the cave. And that way, if he shoots out the back of the cave, I'm ready to catch him. The right hand, grab the carapace, and then I transfer him to my left hand. It's an instant replay here. And when I transfer him to my left hand, you'll notice that I grab right between the tail and the carapace. That point right there is the Kung Fu death grip. If I grab him there, he cannot get away from me. The only better handhold that you could have would be to fold his tail down and that way he can't swim at all. But I can definitely see just based on the size of the carapace compared to my hand that there's no chance that this guy is undersized. I'm super excited at this point hitting the surface. Uh, it's been a long time since I got a lobster. I live in Northern California up in the San Francisco Bay Area, but I used to live down in Southern California when I was doing my masters. I used to dive for these guys all the time, but I don't get very many opportunities these days. So I'm gonna fold down his antenna, I put that gauge between the horns, and look at that, it's on top of the carapace, which means it is totally legal. We got a legal bug, baby! <laughs> so excited. Uh, so I'm gonna open up the bag and watch how I put this lobster in the bag real quick, and I face the tail towards the back of the bag. So if he starts to try to swim away from me into that bag, he's gonna swim in deeper into the bag rather than swim back towards me out of the bag and make sure you lock your bag anytime i'm messing around with my bag in any of these videos i'm actually treading water with my long blade fins like this it's the most efficient way it'll keep your heart rate down of course anytime i'm not messing around with my bag or having a conversation with someone on the surface i'm laying completely flat and i'm just trying to breathe and stay calm i'm not kicking or anything cruising along the bottom in here you can see I'm on the edge of the reef here. I don't want to go out onto open sand. Um, these lobster, they don't want to be on open sand. On occasion, you'll see them that way, but I think you can see consistently they're, they're in the rocks. So look at the size of this guy. You know, it's kind of murky, kind of sandy, and does it matter? Not really. So I'm going to come in real quick and kabam! <laughs> okay, so I grabbed in the footage, you can see I kind of grabbed his face, but actually that's with my left hand. My right hand was on the carapace, and I was really just using my left hand to guide my right hand. The main thing I want to emphasize there is don't grab the antenna. If you grab the antenna, they're going to break off. And if they break off, you've just injured that, that lobster for no reason. It's probably going to get away from you. And they use their antenna uh, to detect predators. So if you take the antenna off of a young lobster, because you're still trying to figure out what looks like a legal-sized bug underwater, 
um, what will happen is now that bug can't really detect predators and it is probably going to get eaten and we don't want to do that so don't grab the antenna all right gauging this guy bam another legal bug all right so um, something I remember the Hawaiians talking about years and years ago, uh, something that we would read in Hawaii Skin Diver magazine was this idea that if you do grab a lobster and a few of its legs break off or an antenna breaks off or something like that, you want to make sure that you dive back down and grab the antenna, grab the little extra legs and get them away from the cave. And the reason that they said that this is important is other lobsters in the area will look at it or even other lobsters in the same cave will look at it they'll basically perceive those lobster parts as this is not a safe place to live this is not a safe place to reoccupy if you don't clean up after yourself you're basically telling all the lobsters don't come back to this spot so i like to pick up after myself i don't know if it's actually true but you know it seems logical Anyway, at this point, I shined around a little bit more. Um, I found a few more bugs, but nothing big. I already had three. I think I only filmed two in the video here, but I had three. And at this point, visibility starts closing out. It starts getting super murky. This was a pre-guide dive in the morning anyway, so I was going to go guide for um, three hours or six hours or something like that. So I decided, hey, you know what? It's been a great day. It's, it, it's time. So I hit the surface, coiled up my float line, and started my swim back in. So remember I said we were gonna full circle back to uh, going through the surf. Um, when you're coming back into shore, you wanna make sure you time the sets. So you're gonna watch the waves and make sure you find a slot between the waves that you can slip into shore. And as soon as you get into that inner tidal, you need to move backwards, walk backwards as fast as you can out of the surf. If you don't, this'll happen. Bam! So I just got hit pretty hard. It didn't knock me over. Um, if it had, it probably would have been funny, but at the same time, uh, if it was a five or six foot wave, that might not have been that funny because it can throw your board up against you. You're wearing fins, you've got a, a weight belt on, you've got spears in your hand. A lot of things can go wrong and it could be just the most basic thing like you roll an ankle or tear some fibers in your ACL. Um, you don't want to do that, so just be very, very aware. Beeline in when you start to swim in and once you get to the shore turn around and walk as fast as you can out of the surf back onto the shore you can see why they call him the spiny lobster you guys will absolutely jack you up Absolutely beautiful. Super stoked. I want to show you how to dispatch them humanely and quickly, and then I'm going to show you how to clean them. Alright, so we're going to put a knife right through here, and we're going to move right through between the horns here, and that'll kill it pretty quickly. We're just going to give them a couple minutes, let them die humanely, and then we'll process them. So you'll find a little bit of a soft area between the carapace and the tail. Just go in kind of parallel to that and you're just going to make a cut along the back and a cut along the belly. And then very easily you can grab the tail, give it a twist, and the whole tail comes out. Now once you've got that tail off, you're going to break off an antenna and you're actually going to push the proximal or the thicker portion up into the vent. You're going to push that all the way through the tail all the way out and that's going to push the intestine right out of the meat so that you're going to have nothing but clean meat. Now at this point I'm just going to bag it up. Now there is meat in these horns as well. And for the horns you're going to do the same thing. You're just cutting the soft tissue right around the base of each of these antenna. I keep calling them horns. I'm pretty sure that's the base of the antenna and the horns are actually the points in between. But hey, you know, what can I say? I'm a NorCal guy. Anyway, all that's going on ice. All right, well, I could have just cooked those lobsters on the beach, but if I did, then this would be my very last video because Diane would have murdered me. <laughs> so I'm bringing them back here to Northern California. I'm meeting up with my girl right now, and we're going to make a nice little meal. Simple lobster tails with a garlic scallion butter, uh, some mashed potatoes with a little chili oil, and a nice little salad. Let's go.
All right, we're adding the last to it, a little bit of Old Bay. Quite the, the feast back here in Northern California with real uh, fall weather here as well, drizzling all over. Let's get in before it gets cold. Going for the mashed potatoes first? Yeah. All right, chili oil. Yeah. Yeah. Chili oil is a great idea. That's really good. I'm getting right into the lobster. I'm not messing around. This has uh, been a long time coming. Get right in that nice garlic chive butter dripping. That was worth it. Oh my gosh. That was worth the wait. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. Scallops are on top of the list, but I think lobster is the very top of the list. How do I just get the shell off? I just don't want to mm. deal with it anymore. Mm -hmm. Grab the meat. Grab the meat. Like this. Just pull the whole thing out. Oh, yep. That's better. How's that look? Oh my gosh. What the heck? I'm getting right in there. Mmm. Oh yeah. Very good. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. The salad is a really nice balance too, because it's got a lot of that acid in there, you know? So it's like very fresh and crisp, which kind of balances this more rich, chewy, buttery goodness that you got going on over here. Well, we have a whole other tail, and we've got the base of those antenna. We're gonna crack them and get into them. Anything left over, including these shells, we're actually going to use these to make a, uh, a cream sauce. I'll show you how to do that in a future video. Of course, we're going to polish off every bit of this, including that other tail. We hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned some things. And uh, if you did so, please leave us a like, leave us a comment. We love hearing back from you. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. That's one of my favorite catch and cooks. Get out of here. You get none. What is that? Ye yellow jacket. I don't like it. I know, me neither. All right. Well, ooh, about to get super wet. Don't turn your back on the ocean.